What is up guys? Today we're going to be talking about five more things that I wish I would have known before heading to Georgia Tech. For those of you who've been around on the channel for a while, you probably remember that I came out with one of these videos several months ago. In fact, it was actually my very first video I ever made talking to you guys. But for those of you who do not know me, my name is Kyle. I'm a senior at Georgia Tech and I'm studying computer science. And with that, let's get started with number one. The first thing I want to talk about is all the different traditions that Georgia Tech has that I didn't know anything about before coming to Tech. One thing you'll probably realize pretty quickly is that a lot of people at Georgia Tech have been set on coming to the school for years. As a result, they probably already know all the traditions, so if this applies to you then this point doesn't matter too much. But for me, I didn't know any of the traditions coming in, and as a result, I feel like I really missed out on a lot of the cultural stuff early on. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about the actual traditions in this video because one, I want to keep it short, and two, I already made a video about it, which I'll link for you guys if you want to check it out. But just to give you an example of me not knowing anything about it and it being kind of embarrassing, at my convocation, there was someone on my floor wearing a shirt for the UGA Bulldogs, which to me didn't mean anything, but my PL and the other people on my floor thought it was hilarious. Now, if you know anything about Georgia Tech traditions, you'll understand why this is funny, but I didn't get it at the time, which was kind of embarrassing. Point number two that I want to talk about is the weather. Now, if you're someone who's originally from Georgia, this point probably is not too interesting to you, but as someone who is originally from the Northeast, I didn't know what to expect in terms of Atlanta weather, so in case you're wondering about it, I'm gonna let you know real quick. In the fall, we always start in mid to late August, which is always very, very hot. It is probably low to mid 90s. Now, that's not that uncommon from where I come from during the summer, but then it starts to cool down in the fall. Unfortunately, it will stay that hot until October. Maybe it'll start going into the 80s at that point, but it's still going to be very hot. At the end of October and into November, you start getting into, as someone from the Northeast, what I would consider traditional fall weather. It generally doesn't get too cold during the winter, think 40s, maybe 30s on a cold day, so don't expect any snow, but if you do get snow, people on campus freak out, and the campus generally has to shut down even for as little as an inch of snow. And the spring, unfortunately, is when the rain hits. The fall and the winter will both be pretty dry, but unfortunately, almost every single day this spring, we had rain. And then finally, near the end of the spring semester, you'll start to get really nice weather. It'll get warm again. The rain will, for the most part, stop, and you'll start getting to feel that summer weather. Obviously, everyone has different ideas of what is considered hot and cold weather, depending on where you're coming from. But speaking personally, the whole season from August until October is very hot, and people generally tend to get pretty sweaty. So do yourself a favor and pack yourself some lightweight clothing. The third thing I want to talk about is that where you live on campus will actually greatly impact your college eating experience. This is because there's three primary dining halls. There's two on East, which are Britain and North Ave, and there's one on West, which is West Village. These are polar opposites of the campus, which means it's probably going to take you 20 to 25 minutes to walk from East Campus to West Campus. As a result, if you're living on West Campus, you're probably not going to want to walk 25 minutes out and 25 minutes back just to eat at North Ave or Britain. Similarly, if you're living on East Campus, you're probably not going to want to walk 25 minutes each way to eat at West Village. The reason why this is a big deal is because West Village is not all you can eat, whereas Britain and North Ave are all you can eat. So if you're trying to eat a lot of food at college and you want to have a ton of different options, you probably don't want to be eating at West Village all the time. That's not to say that West Village is worse than North Ave and Britain. Actually, I prefer West Village partially because it has a Panera and a Starbucks, but the one thing you have to keep in mind is that you're only going to be able to order a single portion of a certain type of meal. So if you want a lot of variety or you just want a lot of food, you're not going to be getting that at West Village. One more thing real quick that I want to mention before we move on. Even though Britain and North Ave are considered all-you-can-eat dining, they don't always have all that much food that you'll want to eat. Some days there's some stations that aren't running and the stations switch out different foods. So don't be surprised if there's days when you don't want to eat anything there, especially if you're a picky eater. As a result, I found myself eating a lot of cereal my sophomore year because they always had cereal. The fourth thing I want to mention is that you should probably be prepared to do quite a bit of walking. Now, Georgia Tech does have buses and the Tech Trolley, however these are notoriously inconsistent in terms of their arrival times, so I prefer to walk everywhere because one, I like the fresh air, and two, I think it's good exercise just to walk around the campus. Just to give you a point of reference, I tend to walk about 5 miles a day, and that's not including any extra exercise or running any errands. So if you're going to be walking, be prepared to walk quite a bit. I should also mention though that there are a lot of people on campus who have things like electric skateboards, scooters, bicycles, so if you don't want to rely on those buses and you also don't want to walk, those are all really good options that you should consider looking into. The fifth and final thing that I want to tell you guys about is less so about the campus and the college itself and more so just a general theme about the classes themselves, and that's that there tend to be a lot of group projects. Group projects obviously have their pros and their cons, some people will like them, some people will hate them, 
but one of the main themes that you'll notice is that the workload is typically not distributed very equally in most group projects. Assuming you went to a high school that was anything like mine, you're probably already familiar with group dynamics like this, where you have some people who carry the project and other people who just kind of sit around not doing that much, just getting the same grade as everybody else. Fortunately, most classes at Georgia Tech try to combat this by using surveys that basically ask members of the team how much work they feel other people on the team are doing. The idea is that if there's some people on your team who aren't pulling their weight, the people who actually are doing the work will give those people lower ratings, and as a result, they will get points taken off of their final grade, encouraging them to actually participate. So if you're one of those people who generally doesn't contribute too much, just keep that in mind because if you choose not to contribute, you'll probably get points dinged off your final grade. All right guys, that's gonna wrap up this video. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. And if you're new here, consider subscribing for new videos every week. That's it, thanks for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one.